when we introduced the idea of functions, we talked about um, something called domain and range. Now, if you'll remember, whenever we um, did that, we said that the items in the first set, or the x's, are called the domain, and the items in the second set, or the y's, is called the range. Well, you know, that's great and fine if we have a listing of things, because then we can just label them out. But whenever we have an equation, I mean, you have to think about what we can do here. We can plug in x's. I could use a 5 or a 6 or a 7 or an 8 or a 1,000 or a 5,000 or a 2.234. I can plug in any x value I want to and find the y that goes with that to graph this thing. There are a kajillion of these x values out there. So if I want to find the domain, it's going to be very difficult to list out every single thing that I can use in here for x. Sometimes it's easier to figure out what you can't use. And when we're dealing with a rational equation, rational meaning ratio, or it's a, you know, a ratio of polynomials, it has an x in a denominator, as in other words. When we look for the domain of a rational expression, here's what we do. We set the denominator equal to zero and find the holes in the domain. Okay, so let's do that here. Let's take the x squared minus four equal to zero which means that if I move the 4 over, we get x squared equals 4. And if we take the square root of both sides, we get x equals plus or minus 2. These are the holes in the domain. These are the places or the x values that you cannot use. If you think about it, if we plugged a 2 in here in place of x, 2 squared would be 4, minus 4 is 0. You can't have a zero denominator in a fraction. It's not allowed. It's undefined. So that means that this positive 2 creates a problem area with this fraction. Well, negative 2 would do the same thing. If I were to plug in a negative 2 here in place of x, when we, were, when we square negative 2, we get positive 4, minus 4 is 0. So again, we have our problem area there, something that causes a 0 denominator, which is not allowed. So that's why we set this equal to 0 in the first place. We are trying to find what causes the problem. Now, when we go to write this as a domain, um, there are two different ways to write domain. The first way is called set builder. And in set builder, here's how we write it. We say the domain is the set of all x's such that x cannot be 2, x cannot be negative 2. And that's exactly what this notation means. The set of all x's such that, and then here's our rule. The other way to write it is called interval notation. And interval notation is actually probably what you're going to see the most um, in college algebra, because once you get the hang of it, it's actually the easiest. And to get the hang of it, I think the best thing to do is to draw out a number line. Here's my number line, and I'm going to put negative 2 here and positive 2 here. These are the places that we cannot use in all of our number line, only these two places. But we can use everything to the left of negative 2. When we write that out, that would be negative infinity all the way to negative 2, using parentheses because it's not included. Then we could use everything in between those two numbers. So we're going to join that with negative 2 all the way up to 2. And then we could use everything to the right of it. So we're going to join that with 2 all the way to infinity. So this is interval notation. It means the exact same thing as this set builder. But really practice that. And if you need to draw number lines to get good at it, you can.